You're listening to Business Talk Radio, where we take business to the next level. Wrapping with Dr. Jacqueline connects you with experts from all over the world to help you take charge of your career, your business, and your life. Wrap along with us. Visit drjacqueline.com to learn how to become a guest or a sponsor. And now, the doctor is in. And welcome to Wrapping with Dr. Jacqueline, the business talk show live here on Business Talk Radio and social media. I am your host and executive producer, Dr. Jacqueline Kerbeck. I am a certified life and career coach, and we could not do the show. It would be completely Im- impossible and inappropriate without my co-host, Mr. Al Sini. Al, welcome to the show. Inappropriate. I like that. Inappropriate. You, Jacqueline, it's great to be here. And you've teed us up with a great guest today. I mean, I... I love this subject, the subject of managing a sales team. Yes. Uh, and, uh, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm really excited to be talking with Shannon, Shannon Gregg about her approach to using CRM in a way that actually does manage sales teams. That'll be fun to listen to. And Shannon is quite successful. She's highly educated. She has her doctorate. I've already had a conversation or two with her, and I'm just very impressed by her and with her, everything that she's done. So I'm excited for her to come out too. So Al, do you have experience personally with Salesforce.com? I, I do. I've worked in. I've worked as a consultant for companies. I, I can tell you from my own experience, people who own companies and manage companies, they're the number one headache is usually managing the sales function. And a lot of it is because salespeople have personalities. Those personalities aren't always well organized and uh, trying to herd them is a little bit like that expression, herding cats. And uh, a lot of people think the solution is to get a CRM like Salesforce, but unless it's adopted by the people who use it, it really won't be very effective for you. And that's why I think Shannon's got such a great story to tell. I think you hit the nail on the head about the adoption rate and and about keeping people engaged and motivated as to why they should use a CRM tool. I think that's also key. Hmm. Definitely. I personally have experience with Salesforce.com and I was, I guess, one of those people that was an oddball because I really loved it. I thought it was great to have all the information in one place. And, and, you know, people would say, oh, well now, you know, the leadership is gonna know what I'm doing, what I'm not doing. And I'm thinking, well, if you're doing the right thing, who cares, you know, put the information in there. That's part of your job. <laughs> well, you know, Salesforce shouldn't be a job. Salesforce should be a tool that you use to do your job better. Yes, so a, yes. but a, a lot of sales reps, I think you mentioned it in a pre-interview uh, a little bit before the program, senior sales reps have their own way of doing things. They're not always really amenable to being shown any new way of doing things. And Salesforce sometimes represents, I think, a little bit of a challenge for them. Well, I don't think we should wait another second before we bring out the expert, Shannon Gregg. Shannon, welcome to the show. And Yay! Thank you so much for having me. I'm so excited to talk to you two today. Nice to see and, you. And our, our audience is going to love what you have to say. I know it. And so before we begin, you are live from Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. How are things going there? Can you believe it? Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania is one of those places that doesn't have four seasons. We have 16 seasons because <laughs> every day might be a different one. So it was winter two days ago and today it's summer. It's amazing. Well, we like it when it's warmer, right? Oh, definitely. Yeah. Definitely yes. heading in the right direction. I used to work at Carnegie Mellon. I was an adjunct professor there for a while. And I don't think anybody really understands how beautiful Pittsburgh is. It has a kind of a reputation as being a steel town, but it's a beautiful place to live and to work. And, uh, you know, I, I, I don't think it gets enough credit for that. Shh, don't tell too many people. <laughs> <laughs> Those pay prices are pretty low. Mm. I told Shannon when we first met, and we met as a result of ultimately Lunch Club, which again, I'm not uh, a paid sponsor for Lunch Club, but it's just amazing the connections that you can make. You can make. So uh, Shannon, when I first spoke with you about Pittsburgh, I told you that I had been there for a number of pharmaceutical events in my previous career. And we went to this place, This I forget how you say it, the place where they put the French fries on the sandwich. Permantis. Mantis, yes. Is it still there? Oh, it's sure. It's everywhere now. There's even one in Florida. Oh my gosh, good for them. 
Wow. Okay. Thanks. They expanded. So let's get right into it. What are you doing as president of Cloud Adoption Solutions? We are so focused on helping small and medium sized businesses optimize their sales productivity, right? And what that comes down to is you've got you've got salesforce.com it's a conduit that's the that's the tool that's the technology tool as you two were discussing but you've got people and processes that you have to consider as well and so a lot of what we do is help our clients who are saying i know there are ways that we can do this better so we can spend more time on revenue generating activities and delighting our customer and that's really what we're doing at cloud adoption solutions is saying how can you really adopt salesforce so that your sales and service teams can go do the job that they do best, which isn't sitting in front of an enterprise tool, entering administrative data all day long. That's huge. Thank you for sharing that. And I just want to let our audience know that we're very happy to hear from them. We want to hear from you. If you have something that looks like this, okay, please pick it up and call us at 609-961-1699. I'm sure Shannon would love to take questions, right? I sure would. So, so Shannon, my, my question, I guess, is um, I'm, I'm thinking about sales reps that I know. And uh, I was more of a pre-sale support person back in the day, uh, but I used to hang around with sales reps. They were always my favorite people to, to work with. So quirky, so full of personality, but not necessarily the kind of people who rush out to, to be early adopters of any kind of technology solution. They really do want to sell. Do you work mostly with the sales reps or mostly with the sales managers when, you, when you're dealing with a client? Yes and yes, Al. We try okay. to take everybody. We try to take everybody's consideration, you know, into account. So we'll typically start with the president or the head of the department. Maybe it's the CIO. Maybe it's the chief revenue officer to say, what outcomes do you want to see from Salesforce.com? What are the types of things that you would say define success? for your sales organization. And then we go and we talk to the actual users. So show me, show me the number of clicks it takes you to enter an opportunity or to put a note after you've been with a contact. And we look for ways we can automate the things that they're doing repetitively so they can really spend their time doing what they do best. Because you're right, Al, salespeople, they love the art of selling. They're very invigorated by the challenge of sales. And really to them, keeping data is something that sort of impedes what they think they do best. No. And, you know, right off the bat, I'm thinking uh, they're driving around in their car, making calls. I mean, during COVID, maybe it's a little different. But before COVID, it was out visiting people, spending time with them. What most of the sales reps I worked with would do is wait until the end of the month and then put in all their notes all at once. <laughs> <laughs> kind of like a time. Al, don't give it away. <laughs> yeah. Rather than do them on the fly, they would kind of wait. And as a result, the records that they kept weren't exactly the kind of records other people could use, if you know what I mean. Yes. Somebody like that. Super common, Alan. One of the things that I try to focus on is to look for those little hacks inside of sales. So if you use the Salesforce mobile app and you go to the contact record, and call the person from inside of your phone, it logs that activity for you. It's one thing you have to do. So I'm always saying, hey, how can you work a little bit smarter? And, and it's not lazy. It's using the technology that's there so that you can spend more time doing the things you do best. Because you're right, Al, keeping those at the end of the month, that's helping anybody who's saying on the other side of it, we're trying to understand what our pipeline or our forecast looks like. Yeah, right, right. That's, I mean, that in itself is a tremendously useful tip. Shannon, I'm wondering in your experience, have you ever seen an organization combine using technology like Salesforce with some type of tangible reward program? So in other words, if you put the data in here, you will get X, Y, Z points or something to that effect? There's, there's two different things I've seen, Dr. Jacqueline, and I'm so glad that you brought this question up because there are people who use that sort of stick approach, which is if you don't enter it into Salesforce, you will not get your commission. And they'll look to see, like, did you enter it the day that you marked it as a one opportunity? And so there's that sort of punitive approach. And, and you know, Dr. Jacqueline, because you're a coach, most people do better when they're guided and salespeople love challenges, right? That's why they're in sales. So there's some really cool gamification tools that are out there that give you points. If, you know, for example, you get something, this many um, contacts entered 
standard in or if you're leading on the leaderboard. And so that sort of thing is super appealing to this newer, younger generation of salespeople. And so I love that there are really cool ways to say, here's how we can reward you for doing the things that we would really like you to do. That's phenomenal. And I'm always glad to hear people are using some type of carrot and stick, so to speak, because that's, I did that for 18 years and I think it really does make a difference. <laughs> On the stick side of things, I'd like a version of Salesforce that delivered a 200 volt shock through the phone to people who didn't like <laughs> You know what? I, I, bet, I bet they'll invent that for you. <laughs> I, I'm just going to put that on my wish list because, uh, no, I, you know, I, in, in a lot of ways, it's I, I, there's another reason why. I mean, I'm thinking it's not these days, especially salespeople, sales professionals don't work alone as much as they used to. Now they work more on teams. One of the great advantages to using any CRM, Salesforce is one example, is that now all of a sudden there's a database of all the contacts and all the relationships that everybody has with everybody. So if we can figure out a way we can help each other, we can do that without having to spend three hours briefing each other on where we are with the client. It's all in there, if you know what I mean. So true, Alan, you, you've, you've hit on something that's really, really exciting and important to companies, which is how can we share all the information that we have in one centralized place? And not having good business communication is a challenge a lot of organizations have. And when you combine that with the fact that a salesperson's average life expectancy at a company is 18 months, that's just six quarters, is so good to have, instead of tribal knowledge, all of that information laid out and accessible in a CRM system. Mm. That's so interesting about the 18 months. And, you know, in the generation that I'm from, which is like caveman generation, I think they're going <laughs> to rename it. It's like you, you, I started out with AT&T and I really thought I would be there for my entire career because that's how, that's how it was when I was growing up in my career. And so 18 months now, that's interesting. It is only 18 months. It's a turnover and it's a young person's game now too. I mean, there are a lot of, you know, I, I a lot of people pick on millennials. I mean, you know, they they get, they have a particular way of doing things, and they have a certain kind of energy that I think other generations either had once and forgot, or never had at all. And uh, because they love technology, I think it might be a little bit more comfortable for them to adopt a solution like uh, Salesforce. But on the other hand, still over the long run, they need to be disciplined enough to use it consistently and not forget, if you know what I mean. How do you reinforce those behaviors on a continuing basis? So true, Alan, for the first time ever, we have four generations in the workforce, right? So you've got people that come from that belly to belly, belly se selling era where they would say, mm -hmm. you know, I know Al, I take him golfing. I understand everything about his family. I know when his birthday is to now where sales has become so much more scientific about, you know, you make a hundred calls, you get 31st meetings, you get 15 proposals and you win three deals. And so now there is this sort of interesting cross section of people who are saying, you know, I love the art of my sale. I love the science of my sale. And there's this really nice place in the middle where everybody can meet and learn from each other. And those are the best sales machines. The ones that say, you know what, go do a ride along with Al. Al's got some really cool ideas and he's got some interesting history that he can teach you. Hmm. I am just envisioning going on a ride along with Al. I think it would be hilarious, but extremely productive at the same time. Al, you're one of those kind of people that it's like everybody wants to just hang around you. What is that about? I guess I that's another. I think it's. I, I think it's. A, I think it's a curse in a lot. Of <laughs> I don't know. No, I, I don't know. I, you know, I think. I think. What really makes a great salesperson is pretty much the same thing that makes a good talk show host, and that's curiosity. If you can engage somebody in a way where you're actually honestly interested in what it is they say, and you don't already know the answers to the questions that you're asking them, I think that naturally draws people into a conversation and, and it puts them in the mood to start buying things from you, which is kind of the objective of all that. And I guess what we're doing is wheeling back to, uh, to uh, what you do for a living, Shannon, at uh, Cloud Adoption Services, and that is... Um, how do I make a salesperson more effective without rewiring their brains? Because I can't do that. I mean, what I what I can do is give them tools and some new techniques, but it has to work within the framework of their own personality. Isn't that right? It's so true. I have a good friend, Mike Gerhold, who calls it Salesforce administration by walking around. And really what we have translated that into is show me a day in the life because it's very easy to sit back on the other side of software and say, here's the way this software should work. 
But if you don't understand all of the sort of nuances that go into the day in the life of a salesperson, it's really challenging for you to make the technology make that a better experience. Hmm. It sounds so, like the chicken and the egg story. Do you, do you <laughs> use this stuff, Shannon, in your own uh, work? Do I ever? <laughs> in fact, today I teach a professional selling class at Point Park University, and today my students are going to be working on a Salesforce trailhead module about professional selling. So I'm surrounded by it. Uh, that's fantastic. Good for you. Congratulations. We're going to take a break and hear from some of our sponsors. And thank you to our sponsors. We love you. And we're always looking for additional sponsors because we have, on average, 8 to 11 shows every week. So we've got room for more sponsorships. Stay tuned. We'll be right back. Hey, everybody. My name is Ralph Graves, Jr. I'm the host of The Ralph Graves, Jr. Show. And I want to invite you to pick up my book, Unstoppable. I wrote a book called Unstoppable. It's, it's seven universal laws that will transform how you pursue and achieve success. The one thing that my 20 years of law enforcement has taught me is that no matter who you are, we are all governed by universal laws like gravity. But in this book, we're going to talk about laws like the law of forgiveness, laws like the law of control, the law of intelligent practice, the law of expectancy. I was able to see how those, no matter what their background was, those who, who identified and, and treated these laws with respect, they were able to go on and lead successful lives. So pick up this book and you can go ahead and pick it up at Amazon.com, BarnesandNoble.com, RalphGravesJr.com, where, um, anywhere where fine books are sold. Thank you. There are 7.7 .7 billion people on Earth today. 40% of these people are under the age of 25. Young adults are the most fertile mission field in the world today. In scripture, we see Jesus pouring his life into 12 young adults who he equipped to change the world and all of history. Like Jesus, we believe that the best approach to reach the world with the gospel is to invest in young emerging leaders and equip them to build disciple-making movements. Concentric is the notion of surrounding and sharing a common center. Our center is the model and strategy of Jesus for both leadership development and ministry formation. As a global alliance, we provide equipping in biblical leadership based on Jesus' example in the New Testament. Jesus modeled for us how to make disciples that reproduce. Focusing on leadership development is key to creating movements that spread the gospel and Jesus' disciple-making strategy to young leaders around the globe. Our Ministry Alliance partners are actively equipping leaders and building movements of multiplication that reproduce the life of Christ. Join us today to equip young leaders with Jesus' strategy that will change cities and nations. The session that we had with BCAT was really entertaining and enlightening. We were able to put together some very specific steps that we as individuals can take and it was really fun to all come together and see sort of where we're going as a team and how we can all get there together. We had a tremendous experience with the BCAT partners. One of the challenges that we have as an organization is to make sure that we have the right people in the right chairs doing the right thing. To do that well, you have to have synergy. You can try to dream up ways to make sure that your group does that, or you can rely on experts. We would recommend BCAP Partners to anybody who's looking to take their organization to the next level. Academy Sedan and Limo is a full-service transportation company serving the Philadelphia metropolitan area with full knowledge of the New York City, Baltimore, and Washington, D.C. areas. We pride ourselves on being the most dependable, conscientious company in the industry. Our always-on-time service and dependable pricing make us the company to call for any event or occasion. Our vehicles can accommodate any size party for any occasion. Our vehicles range from four-door sedans to SUVs to minivans to limo buses to full-size tour buses and can accommodate groups of two to 100. We offer airport shuttle service or over-the-road service without limitation regarding mileage or time and no drive is too long or too far. So if you find yourself in need of transportation of any type with any vehicle, give us a call at 610-842-4564 and let us show you what a real transportation company can do for you.
Use code ACADEMY2020 to receive 20% off your first three rides, including parking and tolls. You're listening to Business Talk Radio, where we take business to the next level. Hello, and welcome back to Wrapping with Dr. Jacqueline, live here on Business Talk Radio and social media. This is The Business Show with my co-host, Mr. Al Sini, and our guest, Shannon Gregg. Welcome back. Thank you. So we changed places. You see that? I, it's crazy. <laughs> <laughs> you never know what's going to go on here. Anything is possible with Zoom. <laughs> Shannon, I wanted to know, how did you first get interested in the whole field of technology? You know, it's so great that you asked me that question because technology is a place that I would have never predicted I would end up in. My bachelor's degree is in English literature. <laughs> Although I will tell you, I think there's a real place for the humanities and technology. So I was running sales operations teams and I found by using technology, I could magnify the force of my team. And as we started applying some of our repetitive processes to technology, I thought, hmm, more people should do this. You know, the people who I worked with could spend more time doing the things they really liked doing and excelled at. And that really is how I accidentally fell into technology. That's great. I love that. I always thought technology was interesting. My dad was a big technology guy. And so I spent the first part of my career working for technology companies. So we have that in common. Yay. I love it. <laughs> Al, are you technology guy? I, I used to be a lot more. I mean, as I've gotten older, that whole idea of being the first person to run any ver new version of anything kind of creeps me out now. <laughs> but I used to be the first one to run out and get whatever the new thing. I remember once spending a, uh, $800 for an HP 45 calculator because it calculated square roots. And I mean, this is going back when this is Fred and Barney Flintstone actually owned that calculator. I got it used from that. <laughs> so we're going back a ways. <laughs> Oh but gosh, uh, so right. Shannon, it, it's it's not just about the technology. I, I know it's really about communication. And uh, what we're really doing is encouraging people to communicate in different ways. And sales reps today aren't just making telephone calls and sending emails or letters. They're also posting on social media. And that whole ecosphere of how I communicate with my clients has gotten so much bigger over the last just 10 years. Uh, a good CRM and some uh, a few changes in habits could really make a difference there, can't they? Definitely can. You know, I think so much of this is about meeting the buyer where the buyer is at, right? So the way that the buyer wants to be communicated to. So some people are text people, some people are email people, some people are great on the phone. And when you use your CRM to say, I know Dr. Jacqueline, she's really good on Zoom calls. Al, he moves around a lot, so he is really great to catch on phone calls in between meetings. And so you can use your CRM to give you those sort of signals, and then you could run reports on it to say, hmm, here's something we understand. In financial services, most of the people I deal with are really good with phone calls. So as you're starting to prospect somebody in financial services, that's a great place to start on the phone. So CRM does such a nice job of signaling to you what your next best action should be. I think, Shannon, that you should also add clairvoyant to all of your skills because you called it right on with Al on the phone and me on Zoom, right? <laughs> Pretty amazing. <laughs> how, how, uh, how big a company do you have to be to make this work for you? You know, Salesforce has recently released a new version called Essentials that is even perfect for one person companies. Very affordable, out of the box, ready, customized, all the way to, you know, multinational companies that have hundreds of thousands of employees. So I think that's one of the cool things about this new push towards, you know, customization, not coding software. There's so much of that out there that is really powerful for the smallest to the largest companies. So that's really interesting, Shannon. So if you are a one man show, you're a small business owner, you now can actually use Salesforce? You sure can. It's a really wow. affordable price point. And it's so, it's so nice to be able to say, as a one man shop, here are all the sort of insights I can gather. And that's incredibly powerful. Sure is. You've got me thinking. I'm going to put that on my list of something else to look into. <laughs> 
something else to spend a little money <laughs> money for uh, every month. I think that's that's what I need another subscription. No, no, no. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> But, it, but I, you know, I think a little bit of discipline goes a long way in that field. And, I, you know, I think a lot of uh, a lot of sales reps, they're missing an opportunity if they don't get to know this, if they don't get to embrace it, if they don't uh, make it part of the way they work. And uh, because it's definitely the future, it's not going away. And one way or another, this is going to be something you have to face. Even if you're only with your current company 18 months from now, that next company you're going to be at is probably going to have a CRM you're going to have to get to know. It's super true. And I'll tell you, Al, I, I know you've interviewed a lot of salespeople in your life. I've interviewed scores of salespeople. And when somebody comes with their resume saying, I already know Salesforce, you know you cut their onboarding time, which means they can get factor into their territory, tired of their quota, because they already understand the sort of framework of how to manage opportunities. That is a, a big thing. That's a success predictor, I think, for a sales rep, especially these days. For sure. It's one of the biggest. I think it's also fun at, from having been in sales for my whole career until recently when I started doing this, obviously, is that you can speak to salespeople in all different industries. If you're using salesforce.com, it's kind of like automatically you have that connection with them. It's like, oh, yeah, Monday morning, we're going to have that sales call. We're going to talk about Salesforce and what we have that we think we're going to close. And so I, I just love it, as I mentioned before. Oh, I do too. I just want to say, Dr. Jacqueline, you're still selling. Yes, that's true. <laughs> you have not stopped. You, you, you might be doing Everybody it in a different form now. And, and you're doing it very well, too, if I may say. Well, thank you. Thank you so much. You're too kind. Shannon, I want to hear all about what you're doing as an instructor, as a professor. That sounds fascinating to me. Tell us more about that. I love it. I love it. There's so much power in recognizing that in America, one in nine people would say they're in sales. And there are so few universities that have sales majors or even professional selling courses. So um, Point Park University is actually where I completed my PhD research on Salesforce user adoption. <laughs> And when they approached me and said, hey, we've got this professional selling course and a big chunk of it is in understanding CRM and how that applies to a sales career, would you be interested in instructing it? I said, you better believe I would. <laughs> <laughs> now, Shannon, was is this the first time you've taught a, a course like this at a university? It's the first time I've taught professional selling. So I've taught marketing before, which has a selling component. But it's the first time I've taught a full semester of professional selling at a university. Congratulations. That is something I always wanted to do. That's fantastic. So that will, will you tell our audience, how do you actually go about, like if you're somebody listening or watching and you've got the credentials, you've got the education, how do you go about becoming a, an adjunct professor or someone who teaches a course at a university? That is a great question. I'll tell you, one of the things that I see universities really sliding into is that intersection of the research and the practice. So, you know, when I went to school, um, even in my MBA, there were some professors who were full-time professors who would tell you, this is the theory, this is the approach. And, you know, when you're working, you say, okay, but I want to know what happens when you roll your sleeves up and do this. You know, when you're inside of a corporation. And so I think universities are now looking for people who have the credentials and the sort of the want and the desire to share what they know in a way that is perfect for adjunct professors. So I think reach out to that university, start to go to their university um, events that they have. A lot of universities are sponsoring events that you can go to. Start to meet people and ask them because if you've got the credentials, universities are definitely looking for people who know what the real dirt is. Yeah, the real deal, the real dirt. See that, Mr. Sini? I, I, I totally get that. And Dr. Jacqueline, if there's a university that needs an adjunct professor on a Saturday morning between the hours of three and four AM when you're available, I'm sure they'd be I'm sure they'd be happy for you to teach. Oh, you are so you're so right, my friend. At least a lot of time that I think you have available in your calendar. But, no. but, but, but Shannon, <laughs> getting getting back to the whole idea of sales, if I've got if I have a client out there for you, somebody out there who has Salesforce, but maybe nobody's logged onto it for the last eighteen months, or uh, or was thinking about getting Salesforce but is worried about rolling it out, getting their sales team to adopt it, 
Would you call what you do consulting or training or both? Yes. <laughs> What's an engagement with uh, cloud adoption solutions like? So typically we'll go in and do what most consultants do. Tell me your pains, tell me your struggles. Let's look at the things that you're doing. And then we'll share some best practices with you. And one of the things that I found in my PhD research, but also in my couple of decades working in this environment is that people deal with change when it's given to them in chunks so that you can say, here's a small amount of change. And then you can collect that quick and say, now look, you know, now you were able to store a hundred leads a week instead of 50 when you were using your sort of post-it note and Excel spreadsheet contraption. And so what I would say, imagine this idea, people talk about digital transformation, like it's something that happens to you, but digital transformation is a continued iterative process. So setting your expectations to say, you know, this is going to be a process just like anything else. It won't just all of a sudden one day I wake up and I'm a CRM expert. It's making those small market changes that's going to make your business better. And and you help with that. So who do you start with? Do you work with, who typically is your first conversation with? Usually we're talking to the person that is the budget line holder for Salesforce <laughs> who's saying, why do I spend so much money on this system that's giving me nothing back that everybody hates? So we start there. <laughs> uh -huh. So they call you. They're the, that's the call you get. And then really, it's literally everybody hates it. I mean, you, you, you go in there and you try to remind them that it's, it's here to help you. It's not here to hurt you. And so you're selling Salesforce inside the company, aren't you? It's so true. That's exactly what it is. That's exactly yeah. what it is. That's got to be very tough. How do you keep yourself unemotional and, and not take any of that negative energy inside? Yeah. Well, you know, Dr. Jacqueline, I also started in sales. So I got very used to a no because a no to me is an opportunity. It's either an opportunity to figure out why not so that we can make a plan to make it a yes, or it's an opportunity to say, well, in this case, maybe it's best that we just start to evaluate what your next best option is. And so I think for me, I'm the opposite of unemotional. I'm so emotionally jazzed up about how Salesforce can change somebody's business that I think um, sometimes my enthusiasm enthusiasm can be contagious. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. You're passionate about what it is you do. And that comes through because you are beaming right now. Yeah. And you, you could see that. I think that energy definitely comes from that's that's infectious. And it comes from the fact that you love the happy state that you can get if you just adjust a few things inside your head to get used to this. Uh, I, 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 I'm remembering an old television show uh, called Columbo. Peter Falk oh, is yes. who a great old guy, rumpled coat, uh, uh, obviously a seasoned police officer, took notes on little slips of paper. If you were to take that paper away and give him a cell phone, have him actually take notes on the cell phone, it's possible because mobile devices make this easier. You can even, even an older sales rep could replace the little things they're using now with a new thing that makes their life so much easier, can't they? That's exactly it, because you don't eat an entire Easter ham in one bite, right? <laughs> Not anymore. No, that's, that's true. Hey, guys, we have to take a commercial break and hear from some of our sponsors, but we'll be right back. This is a great conversation. Stay with Definitely. us. think men are superficial idiots that their brains are wired to be visual. You're told I give great advice. Nike just do it for exercise I think really applies to sex too. 
I've coached hundreds of men and women. Oh, I disagree with her where she's like, put it all out there on the first date. <laughs> you know, an, an open book is not <laughs> sexy. Exactly. You know, you know. <laughs> Do you have relationship questions? Chances are one of my clients or myself or my friends have gone through the same thing and I already made a video about it. So I invite you to check out my YouTube channel, Donna Barnes. I've made hundreds of advice videos based on real life experiences so that you can make better choices. In my upcoming breakup recovery action plan, there's gonna be checklists and quizzes. Best information that I've ever experienced or acquired, if you're stuck, and can't move forward or let go. My action plan is built to help you. Subscribe to my channel. I'll help you have better relationships. Hi, my name is Zane Carson Carruth, and I'm the author of this book, The World's First Tooth Fairy Ever. Reading is magic. Studies have shown that reading to your children lays the foundation for greater success in life. Reading helps develop language and vocabulary skills. It helps improve memory, and it encourages curiosity and inspires creativity. The benefits are immeasurable, and as a parent, you'll benefit too. In only 10 or 15 minutes a day, you'll be creating more memories and a bonding experience that will last for years to come. So take time to read to your children. Read them books about things that engage and interest them. Tales of fairies and magic fascinate children, and as everyone knows, the Tooth Fairy is at the top of the list. If your child loves magic, wands, adventure, and what child doesn't, you'll love reading them books from the trademark series, The World's First Tooth Fairy Ever. Follow along as Abella, the world's first tooth fairy, accidentally starts the tooth fairy tradition. Learn the tricks of being a professional tooth fairy in the book, Abella Starts a Tooth Fairy School. Your child's imagination will soar as you read the adventures of Abella and her magic wand. These wonderful books are available at worldsfirsttoothfairy.com and at Amazon, Barnes & Noble, and Walmart. Hello, I'm Dr. Jacqueline. Wrapping with Dr. Jacqueline presents A Better You. And here to tell us more is the creator of A Better You, Al Sini. Al, welcome to the show. Thank you, Dr. Jacqueline. It's always a pleasure working with you and uh, everyone out there. You know, you might be a coach working with individuals professionally or personally, or you might be a consultant working with businesses, or you might be a trusted advisor specializing in an area like finance, let's say, or the law or healthcare. Uh, whatever of those roles you relate to, you all have one thing in common, and that is you're working every day to help people become better versions of themselves, a better you. And uh, Dr. Jacqueline's A Better You program is an opportunity for you to express your expertise in a particular area for 15 minutes in front of an audience of people who are looking for help from people like you. Yep. So Dr. Jacqueline, maybe you can tell everybody how they can learn more about this. It's so easy. You go to a better you.tv and you sign up to book your session. You're listening to Business Talk Radio, where we take business to the next level. Welcome back to uh, Wrapping with Dr. Jacqueline. My name is Alcini. I'm your co-pilot on today's flight. And our pilot, as always, Captain Dr. Jacqueline Kerbin. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and, and behind us, we have a great passenger today. Yes. <laughs> Her name is Shannon Gregg. And Shannon, during the break, I was thinking you're really in special education. Whether you know it or not. It, the special ed challenge here is to get people who might be fundamentally technophobic to overcome some of those fears of that technology and learn to make friends with their cell phone and run an app that could make them more productive and more effective as a sales rep. Do I have that right? It's so true. A, a lot of times when people seem resistant or they say, I don't want to do it, it is coming from a place of fear. And so a lot of times what we have to do when we're in sales management or we're leading a company is to open up our minds 
and our hearts a little bit to that, to recognize a lot of times people will say no or put up resistance just because they're a little bit fearful of not doing their job as well as they can. So no judging, no fear, no criticism. You're okay, we're all okay. We're gonna start where we are, we're gonna use what we have and we're gonna do what we can. And everybody in the room is gonna be treated equally and everybody's gonna be given access to these fine tools and we're all gonna become better versions of ourselves by using these tools. It's so true. And I think also recognizing everybody learns a little bit differently. So some people really want to share their screen and show you what they're doing and some want to listen to you and some want to watch you do it. You know, so I think recognizing that and allowing that to be part of it is uh, one of the major keys to success. That's great. Shannon, I'm wondering in your role as an adjunct professor and then also as a business owner, how do you keep yourself informed with the latest and greatest technologies that are out there, whether you use them or not, but how do you keep yourself informed about them? I constantly want to know about point solutions because a lot of times point solutions are developed to fill an unmet need, right? So I look on, there are a lot of sites I use, like I love G2, G2 always shows me what's new. And I belong to a group called Modern Sales Pros where a lot of people share, hey, here's something that's new on the market. I mean, the marketing technology and sales technology landscape is just full of logos. There's so much stuff out there. And so I keep my ear to the ground all the time because I do like being that beta user that Al was talking about before I love to break things I'm like let me try and break it and um, as that sort of technology normalizes and it moves along its own technology life cycle seeing where those components fit into that 360 uh, CRM approach well, it's you know uh, while you were talking to you mentioned marketing and uh, I have a client uh, somebody else I've worked with in the past who has a marketing department and a sales department and in many companies there's a huge gap between those two departments but they actually did use features of Salesforce to close that gap because they, they encourage Salesforce to be used by both departments. And they've encouraged their sales reps to feed back responses that they're getting from their clients to marketing collateral, back to the marketing organization through Salesforce. So it's a, a way to build a team of both the marketing department and the sales department. You're spot on, Al. You know, the ability to use Salesforce as a place where marketing and sales can meet and share information has definitely smoothed out that sometimes terse relationship between the marketing team. Hmm. Oh, for sure. For a lot of my career, there were silos. There's sales here, marketing here, and everybody's fighting for budget, and it just didn't make for a nice, happy family, so to speak. It didn't, but if you think about it, um, organizations benefited from that friction, right? Because when marketing's producing really great leads, but they're looking at and saying, they're not converting these great leads we've given them, that sort of pressure on each other makes them both operate sort of in a really optimized way. And so I think now that we have this visibility and we can make these data-driven decisions using CRM, we can sort of tone that down a little bit to say, Let's be friends because we get further together than we can by fighting. Well, well, in in an engagement with uh, with your company, Shannon, uh, at the end of let's say an engagement, what is it the customers thank you for, and and what is it about that that makes you proud of what you do? It, almost every time, our customers say thank you for taking the time, thank you for explaining this, thank you for listening to what we said were our problems and not just assigning good technology to bad process, thank you for asking why so many times. And that always makes me really proud because I know that our team feels like they are really fulfilled by the ability to say, we just helped them have better days. And that is something that you just can't replace. Yeah, that is, that is great. And how long I is the engagement typically? So we have some customers that are that use us as their monthly admin. So we will sort of come in and we're there pervasively. We are on their team calls. We're part of their sort of team huddles. So there are some some companies that never, ever leave us. And then there are some that will come with a big, juicy problem and say, this is our big initiative for this year. We'll get that done. And then maybe we hear back from them a year later when they're looking for their next big integration. Shannon, I'm wondering a company like Salesforce or any technology company, 
there are always little bells and whistles that the client wants that are not part of the software. So how do they, how does Salesforce, for example, evaluate the wish lists uh, that they get from their clients and determine which of these things that they will incorporate into their next software release? That is one of my favorite things about Salesforce. It's very diplomatic. So they do three releases a year and they've got a community where you could go in, Dr. Jacqueline, and say, what I really would like is for Salesforce to take my pulse every day so I can make sure that everybody's feeling really healthy as we return to work. And if you put it in there and 10,000 people upvote it, all of a sudden that gets a little bit more priority in the next release. So it's, it's a really diplomatic approach to enhancements. That's I like really, that. That's an interesting way to handle an upgrade policy. So uh, that's kind of, I, I just have one other question and that's about organizations that I've dealt with. Often they have an IT guy. For a smaller company might just have one. A larger company might have a department. You work with those people? We do. We do work with those people. Sometimes the IT department is who's brought us in because they say, hey, look, we've got a whole team of people that are experts at what they're doing as system administrators or as developers. But the Salesforce thing is something that we just don't know and we don't want to make a choice that doesn't that doesn't have a long you know, positive effect. So we work a ton with uh, IT people. And, you know, I think what we'll continue to see is a lot of these applications become shadow IT, where HR uses HRIS systems, but IT has to be involved. So the, the sort of role of an IT person is a little less, you know, point and fix problems and a little bit more organizationally broad. Uh, more strategy, maybe. Mm -hmm. Good. Shannon, what I'd like to move to for just a few minutes is to talk about what it was like for you as a female business entrepreneur during the pandemic. Yes. <laughs> you know, one of the things that we're seeing is that people are now, instead of saying work-life balance, because we live at work now, right? You, you sort of wake up and you're already at work. And when you go to sleep, you just finished work. And so I think one of the things that's interesting as a woman, as a business owner during a pandemic is saying, how do I set my boundaries? You know, where do I compartmentalize? How do I say, okay, great, I'm going to work from 7 a.m. until 6 p.m. Then that's my family time. And I'll hop back on after that, but I need to set these boundaries. And so I think for me, one of the big things was saying, this is where work is and this is where life is. And here are the times when it's okay for them to harmonize. You brought it so many good points there, especially boundaries. And I think I know for myself personally, it's hard to set boundaries, especially during a pandemic when everybody wants something and they want it right away. And you don't want to say no, but at the same time, you can't give so much of yourself up that there's nothing left for you and for the people depending on you. It's a huge time management challenge, isn't it? It really is. And I know it doesn't impact just women. It impacts men as well. It's 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 I think everybody feels that. But but it raises another question too, Shannon, that I think is very important. Consultants are typically people that visit in person with their clients. That's always been true since 2020. Consultants are working remotely now pretty much. And I, I think it's important for everybody to realize that no matter where you are, if you have a Salesforce challenge like the, the, the ones that Shannon's been reviewing, uh, call Shannon. She can help you no matter where you are. Thank you so much for that. You know, I personally miss sleeping in hotels. <laughs> I love hotels. <laughs> but one of the things that I found is that people are so much more open now to having Zoom meetings and sharing their screen and telling their problems. And so now what we've done is open up this realm of possibility to say, you know what? The best person that I have is in Asheville, North Carolina. I'm going to call him up on the Zoom right now. So we aren't sort of being held back by those, you know, in-person consultancy expectations now. And, and because Salesforce is a cloud solution, you could administer anybody's Salesforce database from anywhere as long as you have the access credentials. Absolutely right. And some good Internet. Yeah, that's That's great. important. That the Internet. What will we be? Yeah, you know, you know what I miss about the hotels? I think I miss the $50 room service hamburgers more than any. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my gosh. That's, you know, I miss traveling, too. I used to travel all the time, and it's it's interesting. But we're going to get back out there soon, I think. Mm, this I year. do, too. Later this year, I think. I do, too. 
Yes. So, uh, Shannon, I also wanted to ask you during this pandemic time, how did you keep yourself and your business viable? How did you network, collaborate? What does that look like for you? At the very beginning of the pandemic, we were sort of reaching out to people that we were very friendly with saying, who do you know that um, we haven't met before? And here are some people that we know that you haven't met before. And so just sort of sharing that network, which made the, the ability to keep de developed relationships really front and center. And then we started seeing all this really cool work coming out of traditional producers who are saying, all right, now we've got this, join us online and you can hop around from table to table. And so it's almost that feeling of bumping into somebody at a networking event. And so one of the things that I think is gonna be really cool is to see how this continues once we can travel again, because I've met some really magnificent people who I wouldn't have met had I been going to my standard events and conferences that I usually go to every year. I agree with you. I was just saying to someone yesterday that I most of the people that I interact with now, I've either never met in person or I've met a few times. And the people that I used to see on a regular basis, I don't really have any connection with anymore. It's, it's kind of interesting, isn't it? It is interesting. It so is interesting. I'm going to ask each of you. So Al, once things can go into whatever the next phase of our lives is going to look like, will you still want to meet people over the internet? Yeah, I, I think I will. I mean, you know, uh, one of the things I like to tell people, I, I've repeated this on this program more than once. If you think that 2021 is about getting back to 2019, then you didn't learn anything from 2020. But what we're learning from 2020 is that a human connection is possible over the internet. We can create relationships. We can develop friendships without having to be necessarily physically present. That's not to say that it won't be fun getting back to that someday. And I think it'll be fun going to trade shows again one of these days and large networking events. But but this actually introduces a question for Shannon because I saw on your LinkedIn profile, Shannon, that you're available as a speaker. Yes. Uh, now that a Chamber of Commerce meeting is happening virtually, you could, you could be a speaker at a Chamber of Commerce event anywhere in the country on the subject of using Salesforce effectively. Isn't that right? So true. This morning at 7 a.m. our time, I joined a live panel that was in London, UK. And now today I'm talking to you two this afternoon. And imagine what that would have been like two years ago. You just wouldn't have done it. And so now it's really, really cool. I made friends all over the country by going to user group meetings where I've been speaking at or, you know, sort of organizational meetings where probably wouldn't have thought of me and I wouldn't have thought of them because they, you know, would have said geographically, this is undesirable and wow, the possibilities are endless. So, you know, that, that point you made Al, I don't want to go back to 2019. We have so many new cool possibilities out there. You can meet, you go, you've made plenty of friends. Up. And by the way, since you brought it up, we're about to go into daylight savings time in the U S Next weekend, I can't wait. I can't but wait. You won't be doing that till the end of the month. So for three weeks, we'll be four four hours apart from the UK than uh, rather than five hours apart. <laughs> just makes it a little easier. You can wake up a little late, a little later, maybe. But but I mean, you're just trying to maintain your calendar when you're dealing in fourteen different time zones can be a challenge. Oh, I'm getting there. I feel like I'm getting that under control. How, how are you handling that, Doctor Jacqueline? It's got to be got to be very challenging for you. It is challenging, but you know what I'm finding that people outside the United States who want to come on and be a guest on one of our shows, they don't care if they have to get up at two o'clock in the morning because that's when the shows are, are being filmed. Like tonight, our guest is from London and he's it's going to be 11 o'clock at night when he's joining us. I had somebody from uh, from Macau who joined us at 2.15 in the morning. So what I feel like is people outside the United States are more flexible than you know, maybe us here in the States. I don't see myself getting up at 2.15 in the morning to do an interview, but I'm glad that others are. It's, it's nice to be invited. Yes, <laughs> and, yes. And for, for the people out there listening and watching, Shannon would be a terrific guest for an event that you're planning. And another reason to contact her would be to get her to engage her as a speaker to speak for typically 30 to 45 minutes, I guess, uh, Shannon, on how you can use Salesforce more effectively. 
Definitely. And I think, you know, the, the, the baseline of it all is how can you be more productive so you can have more time to do the things that are actually important to you? You know, mm -hmm. so Salesforce is a great conduit for that. It really, really is. But, you know, our lives are short. So I think we should do as much as we can to spend the time doing the things that we want to do. And I think that also applies to work. <laughs> Definitely. I think one of the key takeaways for me from the interview is that the three of us are all doing what we love. We're all passionate about what we're doing. And, you know, maybe there were other times in our lives when we weren't so, but uh, as a result of 2020, finding your passion is, it's 2021, right? So if you don't know what your passion is, you had a long time to figure it out. And I, I hope that you will reach out to someone like Shannon who can help you in the world of technology, specifically salesforce.com. And, and just from this interview, it's obvious to me, uh, Dr. Jacqueline Shannon is uh, fun, interesting, energetic, knows a lot of stuff, not just Salesforce. And you know, what could be more fun than meeting new people who have fresh ideas and fresh outlooks on things that could that, that could be fun to learn about and also help us become better versions of ourselves? A better you. Yeah. I love it. <laughs> Shannon, what is the best way for people to get in touch with you? And just to recap, what is the value that you can bring to your clients? Anybody who would like to have better days with their sales or service teams who want to find ways to automate the repeated non-value added activities that they're doing should reach out to me. I am on LinkedIn, Shannon J. Gregg. I'm on Twitter, Shannon J. Gregg. And you can find me at my website, shannongregg.com. There are three N's and three G's. Without those two letters, I wouldn't have a name. <laughs> 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 Shannon, you are one of the people that I want to meet in person when you <laughs> do that. So I will be making a road trip if you'll have me to Pittsburgh. So that'll be fun. We'll go to that yes. restaurant in Pittsburgh. Yes, that's French, it. Road French fries trip. on a uh, fries on on a hamburger or what do they do? Fries are smash into your sandwich, Al. It's the best. Yeah, it's you know how much stuff you save by eating that way? It's so efficient. <laughs> so efficient. <laughs> And guess what? The more things you can put on there, you can just tell yourself and everyone else, you're only eating one meal a day, right? <laughs> you could say that. <laughs> so. One 22,000 calorie meal a day. <laughs> exactly. uh, before we wrap up, uh, Shannon, it's been a real pleasure having you and Hopefully. wish you the very best. And I hope you'll come back and see us and, and let us know what new things you're doing. Thank you. The pleasure has been mine. Thank you. All right. Sure. We'll see you backstage in just a moment. Thank you. That was a great interview. Thank it you, partner. A, it was such a pleasure. And I've worked with Salesforce and it is daunting, uh, but there are ways to simplify it and ways to put like an, uh, a more friendly front end uh, in front of it so that it's easier to use. And, you know, if you need help with that, you contact Shannon. I think she's a great resource for helping people use Salesforce more effectively and getting people to adopt it. And once you have Salesforce in your back pocket, that it's just you know how to use it, you see the value of it and it makes your life a lot easier and it helps you make more money. So it, it, yeah, what, what could be wrong with that? It's good yes. on a resume. Definitely. Definitely. So our next show is a better you and who better than to tell us about a better you than the creator you. So you want me to, you want me to actually talk about it? I yes. Will. Yes. A better you is an opportunity for, uh, coaches, consultants, and trusted advisors, experts in certain specific fields to provide brief, pointed 15-minute lessons to people out there who might be looking for help in your area or a related field. And uh, that the first step in the process is to go online to a betteru.tv, book a session, create a presentation, deliver the presentation in a 15-minute window on Wrapping with Dr. Jacqueline. And then after that, there are two other levels. You can when you're ready and you feel comfortable with it, you can uh, upload that to a learning platform that we're building with edgagement.com. And eventually uh, there will be an opportunity for you to network with potentially thousands of colleagues uh, at a uh, symposium that we're planning in 2022 uh, uh, to pull everybody together for a, a world of a better you. So uh, I, I hope you'll join us. We're looking forward to hearing what you have to say. And if things work out the way some people want them to, we'll be on a cruise ship, right? I well, yeah, I get a little pushback on that, but I can dig the I, the whole idea of doing this whole th a voyage to a better you. 
Uh, yeah, on a cruise ship. That would be fun. So just so people understand, the first step is to go to a better you.tv and you're going to present. We have a show coming up before. If you want to watch, you'll see how it's done. You present a 15 minute, very poignant, definitive presentation where people get a lesson that they can learn from personally or professionally. Then if you like the lesson, you can have it customized with a custom intro and outro, and then it can be uploaded along with a five question quiz to a better you university. And then the last part is you can go on this phenomenal exclusive <laughs> cruise journey to a better you voyage to a better you. So stay tuned for Where more. I, I will be delivering my lesson alternately at the bar and the buffet. <laughs> Now you have more than one lesson, Mr. Sini. So we might see you at several bars and several. I might, buffets. Well, you know, the buffet's open all night. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you again for being here. I'm just gonna thank everyone. We really appreciate it. Uh, Al and I have another show tonight at five o'clock. We're interviewing Ben Chai, and he is joining us from London, as we talked about earlier. He is an actor, an author, an entrepreneur, an expert in how to earn passive income. He's so good that we just had him on last week. I interviewed him on I Have a Story to Tell that we're bringing him back tonight. Okay, we couldn't right. even wait any more time because we want people to learn how you can earn passive income. While you're sleeping, the money is coming in. And who doesn't want that, right? <laughs> I definitely want that. <laughs> I definitely want it too. <laughs> All right. Well, that's a wrap for today. We'll see you hopefully four o'clock on A Better You right here. Bye. Thanks, everybody.